You and Trisha are so connected to Bridges and what they do. What is it about this organization that speaks to you? Bridges is doing incredible work with young people in recovery and that have the same disease that I have. So there's always going to be that connection, right? I think that we as human beings gravitate towards, um, you know, experiences that we can relate to. And I know for me, when I was in high school, I had a, you know, that's when I developed my, my addiction, my drug alcohol problem. And I remember I had a counselor and he was kind of the first person that was like, yo, how are you doing? I was like, huh? Like an adult had never asked me that question really. I mean, obviously my parents, mm -hmm. but like in a school setting, I never had that. And it was the first person that actually kind of paid attention and took me under his wing and shared his experiences with drugs and alcohol in an honest way and how it held him back. And I remember feeling really seen. And I think that that's what we as human beings are striving for is to be seen, is to be heard, is to be part of a community. And that's what Bridges is doing with young people is like, yo, you have addiction issues or other, you know, or other issues. Come have a place where we can see each other, where we can feel a part of, where we can talk about recovery, where we can recover together, where whether we put together some time in recovery, being sober, being clean, or, you know, we relapse and come back, like, this is our community, we got you, we love you, and let's talk about what's going on and have an open forum where we can express ourselves. You know, so many people, I think in general, don't have that open forum yeah. to be able to talk about what's actually going on with them. Mm. And Bridges is doing an amazing job with the activities, with the meetings that they're doing, giving kids something to do that's, that's clean, sober, and, and fun, you know, that's what we all want. Yeah, there are so many kids out there struggling right now. What do you want to say to some of these kids that may be looking up to you as a musician that may not know a lot about your life experience? I would say that drugs never did anything for me. Alcohol never did anything for me. Mm -hmm. um, I had no moderation. I didn't know what balance was. I wasn't one of those people that could like, you know, have a drink or smoke weed on the weekends. It wasn't like that. It was, um, it was all or nothing for me. And I think that there's a giant misconception within the music industry that in order to be like a successful rapper, you have to sit lean or you have to smoke, you know, an ounce a day or whatever, you know, whatever's projected. And the truth is, is that those are actually the things that create a veil between you and the spirit, the thing that comes through us mm -hmm. when, we're, when we're clear. Um, that music comes from someplace else. I can only receive that if I am in my body, if I'm in my right mind, like, and I want to be here. And I hope that, you know, if there's a young person watching this, it's like there's something that might resonate. Maybe that doesn't resonate with, with, with everybody, but I think for those of us with addiction issues, oftentimes it's like we're doing this and we're not happy. You know, I remember be being like 15 years old at Garfield and like smoking weed in the rain, skipping school. And I'm like, this sucks. Like I'm I told myself I wasn't going to do this until, you know, mm -hmm. after school or, you know, I, I, I had these like parameters I said. And here I am. And it's first period that I've skipped. And I'm like looking for more money that I can like, you know, mm -hmm. you know, get some more and stay high. And this isn't fun. Do you feel like those were lost years? I don't feel like they were lost years because once you go down that rabbit hole of wishing that life was different back in the day, then this has all led me to this moment right here, right? Even my shortcomings, my failures, things that I, you know, when I hurt people, when I was not trustworthy, like these are things that, you know, still happen to this day on certain levels. And um, no, I don't think that they're lost years. I think that hopefully I can take them as a learning lesson to change the present. And that's all that we have. You know, I think that there was definitely, um, you know, some lost potential. Mm -hmm. There's some there's some meat left on the bone from some years where I just stared at a PlayStation, you know, you know, Grand Theft Auto screen and sat in my, you know, apartment all day. Like, what am I doing with my life? But also that's been a mechanism for me to connect with people today and to, um, to be here with you or to be 
you know, here with, with Bridges or to be, you know, playing a song like Other Side in front of 12,000 people in Germany and telling my story about recovery and that this is possible. So it all leads to this moment, but I think that you don't want to keep making the same mistakes. Yeah. You have kids. Sloan is a big part of your team. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, what are those conversations like with her based on what you've been through? You know, Sloan has known about my recovery since she was probably three, four years old. Um, I don't want to hide. That is who I am. Why would I hide that from my kids? You know, I think that it's an important conversation to have early on um, and not from a place of fear. I don't want to be that parent that's like, never drink, never do drugs. You know, like they're yeah. going to, Sloan's got her own journey ahead of her, her mm. own path. Coco, you go, all my kids got their own. They're all different. You know, if they, if they struggle, I, I'm going to be there and support them the best that I can. I think that, um, you know, we all have this like, you know, zero to hopefully 80 plus years of life. And in this duration of time, it's not linear. And, um, one thing that I want to do though is be an honest parent and you know not too honest I don't want to you know tell glorified stories of what it was like at house parties and what malt liquor tasted like from the you know from the 7-eleven like I don't need to do that but I it's important for me to be able to say you know dad's in recovery dad needs to go to his to his meetings um that they know my sponsor that um they see me being an active member in the recovery community, that that's important yeah. to me. Yeah. And um, that they know that I'm the best version of myself as, as a dad, as a person, as a musician, as a friend, um, when, I'm, when I'm clean. I bet she looks up to you for that. I hope so. Yeah. All right, Jay, you wanna ask anything, man? Is there anything I'm missing you wanna throw No, that was great. All right, man, yeah. seriously, you the man.